In this screencast, you're going to have the opportunity to evaluate four student responses from last year. These students did the same microscope emoji investigation that you did this year. All the students were trying to answer the question, how does the microscope improve your ability to observe? Before we start reading the responses, make sure that you have the scoring rubric that was handed out in class today. If for some reason you don't have it, pause this screencast and go to your teacher's webpage so that you can print a copy now. On this slide, you can see student number one's response. The student wrote, the microscope improves my ability to make observations by making an object bigger. There were green, red, and black dots on my emoji. There were also some blue dots. This is why the microscope makes it easier to observe things. Whenever you're evaluating a student's response, you want to pay close attention to the claim, the evidence, and the reasoning. For the claim, ask yourself, is the answer the student gave correct and complete? For the evidence, does the student give specific data from the investigation, and is there enough? For the reasoning, does the student explain why the data answers the question? Take a moment to pause this screencast and reread student number one's response. Then, score the student based on the rubric in front of you. For student number two, you're going to use the same criteria to evaluate the response. As you're looking at the claim, make sure that that first sentence gives a clear, correct, and complete answer. When you're looking at the evidence, make sure that the student has given observations that he or she recorded directly in their science journal. While you may be tempted to put in your personal opinion or personal experience, that's really not a good source of evidence, so be wary of that. And for the reasoning, make sure that the student has elaborated on exactly why the microscope helps magnify objects to see them in better detail, because that was what the student was claiming in the first sentence. Pause this screencast so that you can evaluate student number two's response now. At this point, you might be seeing a bit of a pattern. Each student's response is getting a bit better. However, when you evaluate this response, you're using the same claim, evidence, and reasoning criteria. Make sure that the claim is brief and to the point. You should know exactly what the student's answer is. Make sure that the student has given more than one piece of evidence to really convince the reader of the claim. And most importantly, make sure the reasoning has been fully elaborated upon. Lots of times, students think that the reader will infer or just assume that their evidence supports the claim, but the student's job is to convince the reader that the claim is actually correct. While you might think you're being a bit repetitive, elaborating in your reasoning shows the reader your thinking. Take a moment to pause this screencast so that you can evaluate student number three's response. Last, we have student number four's response. When looking at this student's claim, make sure that sentence, that first sentence, is correct and complete. Make sure that the student has given enough evidence. There were lots of details that the student probably observed about their emoji when looking at it under the microscope, so it's best if the student gave more than one piece of evidence to support the claim. Finally, make sure that the student just doesn't just stop at saying that the evidence supports the claim, but they do a little bit more in terms of elaborating. You can either do this by giving an example or drawing upon your science knowledge. For this particular investigation, you actually learned how a microscope works. So look to see if the student drew upon this information, especially from those training notes when they were giving their reasoning. Take a minute to pause this screencast so that you can read and evaluate student number four's response. Now that you're finished, now that you're finished looking at all the student responses, 
Take some time to type the following link into your browser. This will take you to a Google form so that you can answer a few questions. We're going to leave a bit of a cliffhanger. You won't exactly know how your teacher scored these student responses until tomorrow. We'll review part two of this screencast.